is back. Good morning, everybody. It's midnight and beyond. And yes, it is true. It's finally happening. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom is getting a stinking remake. And I have only two words to describe how I am feeling. I'm ready! I'm ready, 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 go SpongeBob, go SpongeBob, go SpongeBob, go self. Holy stinking Jesus, I can't believe this is actually happening. Yes, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom is getting a stinking remake. I got up at 5 stinking 50 in the morning so I could watch the stinking Pokemon Direct, which I was not jazzed about. And after I saw it, I was like kind of underwhelmed with what they showed us, but whatever. Like, after that happened, stinking out of nowhere, THQ, which I didn't even know was still around. I thought the company went bankrupt, but apparently they're under a different name now, THQ Nordic. They just out of nowhere, as soon as the Direct finishes up, they are all like, oh, hey, we're still around and look at what we're making. It's stinking Battle for Bikini Bottom! They are remaking it under the name SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Oh my stinking god! So I just wanted to make a video to uh, discuss what my thoughts are and like any other hopes and dreams I have for this remake and stuff because this is too exciting of news to just keep to myself. But also, it's ever so conveniently that, um... This is sort of on topic to uh, stuff that I missed within one of the bonus videos for my Battle for Bikini Bottom Let's Play. Uh, there was just some things I didn't show off, so I thought uh, it would be good to show off these unused features that I forgot to show, and also talk about uh, unused features that might be coming back in the future! But yeah, after we uh, paid 40,000 shiny objects to go into the stinking theater, you could actually talk to the receptionist and just have a little conversation with him, which I don't think I showed off in the LP, so here you go. What if I want to watch a movie I haven't seen? Like, can I see Death Fish 2000? Sorry, sir. What about Carp Wars? No. Nautical Nonsense 23, The Procrastination. Uh, sir, I'm on break now. Oh, okay. Just a little bit of dialogue for you that we haven't seen before. And also, something that I didn't know that we overlooked is that, um, someone pointed out in the comments of my bonus video that there is extra... Uh, content in the theater that I never showed because as you can see the first image on here is the robot Squidward boss fight that never got used So I just assumed whenever we got back to uh, That picture we would be done with seeing all the things in the theater, but apparently there are two robot Squidward photos in this uh, Theater reel so I've been skipping out or missing out on all these extra photos for like such a long time because I would always just stop it as soon as I saw robot Squidward again so if we go all the way back through here and look for the second Robot Squidward photo, which is identical to the first one. If you keep on pressing A, more pictures. This is a different uh, photo about uh, Caveman SpongeBob. So again, I'm not sure if this was meant to be unused content as in like there was going to be a Caveman level or if it was going to be like Revenge of the Flying Dutchman where he has alternate costumes that give him different abilities. Not entirely sure, but uh, here it is. It was in development for quite a while, actually, if they went and drew all these concept artwork for it, and they had like an unused model for it as well. Uh, there's another level. It seems kind of just like generic water area. I don't know if it's like Goo Lagoon or if it's uh, somewhere else in particular. It looks like Robot Octopus on the bottom. I don't think that's Robot Squidward, but just another area, I guess. Um, here is... Here's Spongebob using the cruise bubble in like a different uh, version of the flying robot. I can't even remember their names, my god. Like, oh, I'm so excited to fall back into this game, even though like I only LP'd it like two years ago. I'm so, wait, it was even, it was just one year ago. No, I think it's two by now, but um, I'm so excited to go back into it. Uh, we got uh, Jellyfish Fields, I think. You see Spongebob's house in the distance. There's uh, another downtown Bikini Bottom level. Uh, I don't know if that's Spongebob flying through the area. Maybe he was originally supposed to have the ability to do that instead of Sandy using the ropes, I guess. And you can see robots driving cars. Uh, how the tables have turned, I guess. Or no, they're not cars, they're boats, excuse me. 
Uh, another photo of the robot squirter boss fight that I've never seen before. So instead of just like having the rocks drop on him, like we also have this example of how he's gonna spit out a bunch of uh, purple balls and stuff. There actually is a robot squirter boss fight in the Game Boy Advance version of Battle for Bikini Bottom, but it's not. It doesn't look like this at all. And then is that it? Yes, that is it for real this time. So now we have shown off everything in the theater, but. We gotta go ahead and just talk about stuff because, oh my stinking god, Battle for Bikini Bottom is getting a remake. Besides DuckTales Remastered, has there ever been a TV show or movie based video game that's gotten a remake? I think, as far as I'm aware, I think it's just DuckTales and Battle for Bikini Bottom. And you know what they both have in common? They're both legendary! My stinking god, they have such a strong and amazing legacy that, like, you. Like. It's insane, it would be insane to not bring them back because they mean so much to gaming communities and like the communities of the people who watch those individual shows and everything like that. They are revolutionary, they did so stinking much and I adore it. Oh my stinking god, I don't even know what to say right now. So, we have very 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 little information right now, we got a very quick teaser which was just an animated intro of him putting on that legendary helmet. And that helmet's so stinking iconic, it's like the first thing I think about when I think of Battle for Bikini Bottom, and yet it never shows up in the actual game itself, it's only on the box art of him wearing that army helmet. But showing that Spongebob trailer with him putting on that helmet, it's like just as much hype as I could have gotten for like a stinking, uh, you- not a YouTube video, a stinking Smash Bros video for like seeing an iconic piece of clothing or iconic area in a game that reveals a certain character. like. I obviously I know like it's gonna be like a Spongebob announcement, but then Battle for Bikini Bottom? Oh my stinking god, I was so stinking happy, I'm, I can't even describe it. So, what the heck does this mean exactly? We're getting a remake of Battle for Bikini Bottom. I... I don't know, I have like a lot of... There's some hit and miss remakes out there to be perfectly honest, so... Uh, will this end up being one of them where it doesn't turn out as great as it could have been? Are they gonna be uh, faithful to it? That seems to be their main advertising campaign. They say that they are going to be incredibly faithful to it. And that's a shiny object I've never gotten before, apparently. So they don't respawn. Uh, but yeah, they said they're going to be incredibly faithful to the original when recreating it. But it's going to be, like, rebuilt from the ground up with glorious new graphics and, like, polished gameplay. And some new features. So, those new features that they talked about, they are going to have an online multiplayer mode. It is going to be two players and, uh, let's get the exact wording on here. I actually have notes for once, guys, because I'm new to this whole reaction video sort of thing. Uh, we got, it says brand new horde mode multiplayer for up to two players, online and split screen. Okay, so it could be online or, uh, co or local, I guess. So that's really cool, and I guess it's gonna be disjointed from the main game, it says it's like a horde mode, so I guess you can't go through story mode with multiple characters, but that's understandable. Uh, I feel like they would have to like re- not recreate the entire game, like rebuild it or make it different, but I feel like it would be very different from uh, how it already is if they had to like rebuild it to make it so it's compatible for two players, I guess. And like the fun of Battle for Bikini Bottom is like switching between all the different characters, so I wouldn't want to just be like stuck with a single character and have a friend play as another character on their own. So that's all fine and dandy. I'm incredibly excited to see what this horde mode means and like what it is if it's co-op, if it's like a battle system, I don't even know. I really have no clue, I'm so sick and excited, I'm not gonna hit this thing because it's really stinking loud. But um, oh my god, I don't even know what to say, I'm just like so stinking flabbergasted. I haven't recorded in like such a long time but I wanted to talk about this so badly. Uh, another thing that they said is going to be in this remake is restored content that was cut from the original game. Specifically stating the robot squibber boss fight will be in this remake and more. And more? Like, oh my god, they are going to be... I don't know if that's going to be something like... Will it be incorporated into the main story or will it be like a side thing where like you just go into an extra room where you fight all this, uh, see all this unused content. Or are they going to make the game story longer? Are they going to make this world bigger? Are they going to make it longer? I don't know. Because if you watch that bonus video where I went over all the unused content, there was a lot of stinking stuff cut from this game. So the Robot Squirt Boss Fight was like the most iconic one. But also there was supposedly going to be a glove world in this game. It doesn't have any actual uh, assets to it aside from 
of, I believe this was a screenshot that showed on the pause menu, it had Glove World written here, but we've never seen any actual uh, footage of it, I don't think, unless it was in that concept art and I just don't remember it. But there's that going for it, and then there's also, uh, I don't know if like that was like not far along enough into production to where it will be in there, so I would not be surprised if that didn't go, if it didn't get added into this remake, but if it did, uh, more power to them, because that is incredible that they even remember that. Uh, something else that I'd love to see, I would absolutely love to see Sinkin, uh, the Patrick Dream, uh, flesh out again, because that's another very infamous level, or, as you remember in the Dream level, uh, Patrick's Dream is, is just a black void where you, uh, talk to him and he gives you a golden spatula, which is really singing funny, but... Uh, maybe we could also have that dessert level where it's just like covered in food and like you go through that and then you, there's a door in there And once you go through there, then you enter the black void because the black void is so stinking iconic and I don't want to see it completely go away So uh, that could happen as well uh, There were unused power-ups like the smelly Sunday, which was meant to let Spongebob and Patrick break stone tiki's uh, with the regular attacks or whatever uh, We might be seeing that on oh, all the unused costumes and everything. There's so much stuff to uncover that might be in this remake and I'm oh, also the final boss of, uh, I guess spoilers if you haven't uh, played this game for yourself, in which case I'm so excited for you finally getting a chance to do this when uh, the remake comes out. It's coming out on all platforms, I'm pretty sure. It's on PC, Switch, PS4, and Xbox. But yeah, I'm so stinking excited for it. Um, but yeah, the robot Spongebob boss fight at the end of the game, it had an unused phase where he used the anchor arms, so... Um, and there's also unused... Uh, assets for Spongebob use, being able to use the anchor arms uh, on his own, which is really cool, so we might see that as well. There's so much stuff I'm excited for, but also concerns. It is a fully voice acted video game, and I was super happy that they got more or less the entire cast of characters to return for this game. However, there are some exceptions. Mermaid Man and Mr. Krabs do not have their original voice actors. Not only that, but unfortunately Barnacle Boy's voice actor passed away just a few weeks ago as of recording this. So, if they do bring back this game, are they going to be re-recording everything from scratch? I don't know how that works exactly, if they have the rights to it anymore, if they have the rights to that audio. Because, um, as we have seen with my Let's Play of Code of Princess EX, when that game was released on the 3DS, it was created by Nicholas. Uh, it was created by, um, Atlas, excuse me, the dubbing was. And when it was brought over to the Switch, that was done by Nicholas, so they didn't have the rights to the dub. So the dub was left out of the Switch version, it was only in the 3DS version. Meaning that they might have to re-record, because of th THQ went under, I don't know if they outright have the rights to, uh, that audio anymore, if they're gonna be redoing it from scratch, who knows. And, I don't know how it works for someone who's passed away, do they have the rights to use Barnacle Boy's original audio from the first game, or could they not do that because the person who created it is not with us anymore? I really have no idea, but it's going to be a sight to behold. And like, it's sort of a question, do I want them to recreate it? There's a video online where uh, the voices of Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward, and Mr. Krabs all, uh, it was like at a convention and they did a table read of the first episode of Spongebob, like they reread it, it was sort of like a redubbing of it in real time. And it was cool to see that and everything like that, but it was also sort of, like, weird, I guess, because you could tell their performances have changed drastically over the years, like, uh, there's the obvious one with Spongebob's voice getting a lot higher pitched over the years. Uh, Patrick seems like a lot more gruff and whatnot in the newer seasons. Um, Squidward and Mr. Krabs are more or less the same, I feel like, but, um, obviously they can't recreate the exact specific performance from... Um, all the original recordings, if they did redub it, it would sound different, and I, just, I would just have to deal with it. But it's, like, something that I am, like, such a purist for, and, like, I... I would have, like, somewhat of a problem with it if they did redub it. And, like, it just wouldn't feel right, it's just I wouldn't be able to stop thinking about it. If they could get those performances just right. Maybe they could do the performances better than the original, who knows? I don't know, like, that could be a thing that happens, but... There's gonna be a part of me who's, like very, very attached to the original performances of all the characters, because they nailed it with every single one, I feel like. But then there's another thing which, uh, it technically would be a good thing to have Mr. Krabs' original voice actor on board for this game, wouldn't it? So if they brought him back, that should be a good thing, right? And yet I have 
questions on whether or not I would want it. Like, is Bootleg Mr. Krabs so stinking iconic to this game that I would feel bad to see him go, or to hear him go, and get switched out with the actual voice actor? It's like with uh, the anime Little Busters, it's based off a visual novel of the same name and I had never played it before, but the character uh, Mio Nishizono, she has uh, her original voice actor for the game uh, could not dub over the first season of the anime because she was uh, giving birth at the time, so she wasn't available. However, um, I didn't know this because I had never played the game before, but um, when the second season of the anime came around, they got her original voice actor from the games back and had her do it for that one, and I was entirely thrown off by that. I was super confused. Like, I did not like that performance of her. I was so attached to the original one uh, with uh, her original voice actor, but or with the season one anime voice actor, but when they brought back the video game voice actor, which is the iconic original one, who should have been there from the beginning, I was upset with it because of my very specific situation where I was introduced to uh, Little Busters, or this universe, or the Little Busters experience, with this specific voice actor, and yet they switched it back to the original one and I didn't like it, but should I not like it, or should I be okay with it? Uh, I don't know. It's a very specific scenario where, like, I don't know if... Uh, how I would feel about it. If they got the actual Mr. Krabs in this game, would I be okay with it, or do I like the bootleg one so much at this point? I don't know. Because I remember Kid Me was all like, you're not Mr. Krabs, and like, uh, something about it now is just like, I feel kind of bad to see him go. And of course, Mermaid Man's voice actor. Um, there's not much we can do about that, though, because like, his voice actor uh, passed away a long time ago, unfortunately, so there's no chance of getting him in this game, so... Would they give us a new bootleg Mermaid Man, or would they reuse this one? I have no idea. I'm not as attached to that Mermaid Man as I am to, uh... I'm not as attached to that bootleg character as I'm attached to this bootleg character, is what I'm trying to say. But, I don't know, I just, it's a very gray area. My biggest concern about this game so far is just, what's going to happen with the dub? Because, I feel like it's so stinking iconic, and there's no way that they're not gonna get, like, the, um... I don't know, I feel like there's no way that it's going to be like replaced with other characters, so we don't have... There's no uh, reason for concern of having like a Spongebob voiced by a different character or a different person or Patrick voiced by a different person, because like that's never happened for any of the Nickelodeon video games. I'm pretty sure they always get the original voice cast if they can, or just like almost always, I'm pretty sure, but... Uh, with this very specific situation, Mr. Krabs wasn't available, or, like, uh, his voice actor's, like, a lot more famous than the other ones, apparently. He does, like, real acting on camera acting. Too busy being, like, a CGI detective in a future with, like, androids and, and whatnot, and befriending a very good boy, if you know what I'm talking about. But, um, and getting mistaken for Howard Stern. I seriously can't believe I didn't recognize him, but whatever. Um, I don't know, it's just... A very specific situation where I don't know how I'll feel about it and my biggest concern is just seeing what the dub is gonna be like uh, other concerns I guess I don't know what the visuals will be like I guess we've seen some screenshots the first trailer was completely animated so that doesn't really give us much to go off of uh, but other screenshots that you can see on Steam there is this cover art photo and there is this photo of Spongebob Patrick Sandy and then one of uh, Spongebob and King Jellyfish it looks pretty stinking good. I don't know if this is like actual in-game graphics or if those are like just pre-rendered artwork or whatever. I or concept artwork. I have no idea. So if it looks like that, I'm gonna be okay with it for the most part. I don't know. It's just like I don't know what I want with remakes. Honestly, just do I want it to look exactly the same or do I want it to like get some extra shine to it? I, I do want some extra shine to it now. I think I'm just being like crazy right now. I'm just like, oh, I will miss the, like, the exact graphics of the GameCube. I missed the 480p or whatever. Um, no, I won't. Don't worry about it because, like, looking back on other classic, not classic, but, like, a stellar remakes that have happened over the years, like, uh, Wind Waker HD, which looks beautiful, uh, the Spyro and Crash Reignited Trilogy and, uh, Remastered, whatever it's called, Insane Trilogy, they all look phenomenal. Uh, it's, they all look fantastic and there's no room for complaints about any of them, so I think SpongeBob is going to be fine visual-wise, I don't have to worry about that too much. There's just like, I have so much attachment to this game and I want to like make sure that everything turns out exactly right, and I hope that THQ wants that too. 
and they're gonna strive to make it happen. So like from the screenshots, it looks incredibly faithful. You could see like some of the robot designs coming back and um, they have a little bit of a different redesign, like the generic ones of, uh, they have like, like the little base ones, they have uh, red eyes instead of green. I'm okay with that little change and like the hammers have like a bit of a different design, like their ham is covered in metal a little bit more. That's all fine and dandy, I don't, I'm uh, not gonna get too hung up over that, it's like whatever, it looks fine, it looks cool. But yeah, I guess my biggest concern is just uh, stuff getting removed or stuff getting changed, I guess. I'm fine with stuff getting added, just stuff getting removed is my biggest concern always, so. Uh, we did see some different tiki designs in the background. You can see a, a wooden tiki with a bit of a different design. I'm okay with that. It's just like a very minor thing, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, some stuff I would like to see though. How about something like completely different? Like, will they add completely new content that wasn't like unused or whatever? Maybe they're just gonna make new stuff on top of that. Um, something that I wanted from this game from like the very beginning. I mentioned this in the LP way back then. Um, I would love to see Pearl in this game because she's like the only main cast of characters, I guess, besides Karen, though we do have a Mermelayer computer. I wouldn't mind them changing that character to just straight up be Karen, to be perfectly honest. So maybe that'll happen in the remake, I don't know. But uh, aside from that, Pearl is the only one who isn't in this game, the only main uh, character that isn't in this game. And I'd like to see her get added in some way, shape, or form. I don't know if that's actually gonna happen because then they would have to incorporate her into like, uh, different levels and like have her have missions attached to her which means they would have to take missions away from other characters that were already attached to those missions so maybe it's not the best idea but I don't know if they do add new levels like Glove World or Patrick's Dream uh, maybe they could find a room find space for her in there I don't know uh, I don't think we're gonna be getting any new playable characters there's a rumor that uh, Squidward was going to become playable because of the robot Squidward boss fight because uh, all the robot masters uh, aside from plankton uh are all based off the playable characters so would we see a playable squidward i would love that so stinking much but that's the thing like if they do bring like new playable characters like new worlds into this there is going to be some new dialogue if it's in the main game unless it's like specifically in like a side mode where you just see like unused content land and there's no dialogue attached to it there's going to be re there's going to be new dialogue or new recordings for this game that's just a fact so it's just a matter of are they going to be redoing it all or are they going to just be dubbing over new stuff i don't know but as in terms of a playable squidward i would absolutely love that i don't know if that's actually going to happen because uh, again they would have to incorporate him into every single level as well make like specific segments in the levels like attached to his abilities that only he could use which i don't know if they're really going to do that each level only each level doesn't even do that for all three of the characters like it goes back and forth between spongebob uh, and Patrick and then Spongebob and Sandy so there's no sp uh, level that has all three of them being used oh my god I'm just like so flabbergasted and excited I don't even know what, to, what else to say like uh, other things I would want I don't know just like make it good just don't mess it up I beg of you <laughs> like um I'm a little salty over how the Luigi's Mansion 3DS remake happened it's not terrible it's just like my main issue with it is that it's on the 3DS. I wish it was on the Switch so stinking badly. But this one is coming to console, so I don't have to worry about that. But, oh boy, like, please don't mess this up. I beg of you. This is such an important game, a beloved game by so many. I, and with everything else happening with Spongebob right now, like, Spongebob is just, like, for so many years has been sort of like a death trap because so many things that come from it are just not good and it loses sight of its vision and everything like that and literally the day before this announcement there was an announcement that confirmed a spongebob spin-off series happening where he's 10 years old and at summer camp it's a prequel series and it's gonna be cgi and also it's been uh, discussed a while back that um there are multiple spin-off series of spongebob featuring other characters that are going to be happening in the future so like sort of similar to what planet sheen did as a spin-off to jimmy neutron there might be a spin-off starring patrick or a spin-off starring squidward the fact that all of this stuff immediately got announced after steven hillenberg's passing it's unfortunately it's just a fact that nickelodeon was waiting for him to pass before they could do this because he disapproved of all this immediately he didn't want spongebob to become like this huge cash cow he didn't want it to 
go on for as long as it did after the first three seasons in the movie he was done with it he left the project but nickelodeon knew it was a gold mine so they didn't let it stop so it's continuing on for like 10 stinking seasons and still going to this day with another movie on the way after the second movie which wasn't really good and it's never gonna stop now they're making this stinking spin-off series of him at a summer camp with cgi animation and uh, there's probably going to be a Patrick show or a Squidward show or a Mr. Krabs show on top of that. It's thinking weird. And I don't know, like, it's sad that Nickelodeon has, like, gone out of their way to show that they do not care about, like, uh, what Steve would have wanted. It's just, uh, even Paul Tibbetts, someone, one, someone who's worked on the show, like, back in the day and, like, was very attached to SpongeBob and whatnot, he, um outed Nickelodeon on Twitter saying that this was incredibly dishonorable to uh, Steve's memory and his legacy and the fact that they're specifically waited after his passing to do all this stuff they were literally waiting for him to be gone so that he wouldn't be able to stop them or say no to what they were doing with his creation it's really stinking sad and I I hate that it's turned to this but I'm glad that there's like so many people who's just continue to latch on to the original three seasons of Spongebob and the movie and all the wonderful memories that came from that era. Spongebob owned the stinking planet back then. It was a phenomenon. It's crazy that it's still going on today, but like hardly anyone that like talks about it the way they talk about it back then, the events that took place with this don't happen anymore. It was stinking insane. SpongeBob was like part of the stinking world back then, and yeah, he's still around now, but like not with the same amount of volume that he was way back when. And I wish I could go back to that golden era, that golden sponge era, but oh my god, it's just in insane. All the stinking memories from that show, and I will never forget it, and I'll always be grateful that I have this stinking yellow sponge in my life. So yeah, I am incredibly concerned for the remake considering all the other uh, problems regarding Spongebob content over the uh, more recent years and stuff that's going to be coming in the near future, which also seems really concerning. But in terms of this game, I do think that it's going to be incredible. I really do have high hopes for it uh, amongst all my concerns. And I am incredibly excited to see this game reintroduced to a new generation. It is truly something special. If you've heard about this over the years but just never really understood why people are so obsessed about it, this game is completely different from all the other TV show and movie based games out there. You have to trust me on that. You have to trust all of us on that. This game means so much for, to so many people and there's a very good reason for that. And I'm so excited to have all of you have your own personal experience with this game when it finally releases. Oh boy, but with that, I think we're just about done here. The final question that I'm sure you're all going to be asking. Will I let's play Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated? Yes. I went into this let's play thinking it would be the best let's play I had ever made, if not one of the best. Because I adore this game so much and it makes me so happy, I was incredibly overjoyed that I was finally getting to LP it and I was excited to share it with all of you. But it turned out to be such a train wreck from what I initially thought it was going to be like. Almost every single solitary episode of that Let's Play was a failed recording and had to be redone, which just brought my commentary down, brought my mood down, made me so sad and angry and cynical. And the final product was not as cheery and joyful as I would have hoped for it to be. So I've been trying to find some sort of way to bring this Let's Play back and have another shot at it because I know I could do better and I want to do better with this one. However, I didn't know what I was going to do. Like after Steve's passing, I was considering doing like some charity event for uh, in his memory uh, showcasing this game. I was considering doing like a versus uh, with some friends of mine who are also in love with this game. I really didn't know what I was going to do. But this is the moment right here. With this remake coming, I am telling you right now that I will be back to do this game again. And hopefully I'll be able to do it justice this time with a very stellar remake. If I could do it day one, 
I will, but knowing my luck, there'll be some sort of event popping up that will put a delay on things, but I'll try my best to get it out day one, and hopefully it will be an experience like no other. I'm incredibly excited, and I can't wait to share my first experience with the re-experience with all of you. But for now, it's time for the waiting game. According to Steam, the game will be released when I'm ready. Ha ha ha. Hope. Guess we got something to look forward to, at the very least. And E3 hasn't even started yet, but we have already started off the E3 season on a very, very high note. Thank you all for watching. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later in SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Good night. Thank you.